here. How are you? Look at this little baby that I've just bought. This is my new Powermatic 14 inch bandsaw. And that cut that I was doing just then, let's have a look at how good a bandsaw can be when you square it all up. Not saying that just Powermatics will do that, probably most bandsaws, but if you spend the time to set it up correctly, a bandsaw will be terrific for you. Now this video is all about when I bought the thing, unboxing it and assembling it and giving you some tips as we're going along. Uh, I'll make the mistakes, you can learn from my mistakes as I was assembling it. Not too many, but <laughs> there's going to be one or two there. Now, why did I buy a Powermatic bandsaw over the others? The reasons I bought this over any of the other 14 inch saws or any of the other bandsaws in total was, first thing, it has the capacity to do a 12 inch deep cut. This guard here will come up to 12 inches after you fit the riser block and I'll show you how to do that. The spine is cast iron so combined with that riser block, the cast iron spine and the 12 inches there's no flex between the top wheel and the bottom wheel down there. It just drives beautifully. That's the first reason. Second reason, it has this guy up here. Now this is a quick release. At the moment I've got the blade tensioned so I can use it for cutting. Overnight, if I had a thinner blade in this, or even this blade, I can lower that down to this point and it detensions the blade. All the way down to the bottom here, when that red knob is down here, or orange knob, I can change the blade. So that's, this is a really nice feature. That's two. Third feature is the light. Now I haven't got the light turned on at the moment because if I did, it's so bright well, depending on the bulb you put in it, but if you've got a good bulb in there, this light just is in exactly the right position. If I had the light on, I would be very dark here at the moment. All you'd see is a bright light at the top because the camera wouldn't be able to expose for it. It is great. Next reason, the blower. Now, this guy here is connected to a little air pump down in the motor. When you turn the machine on, the air pump is blowing. I show you how to set it all up, put it together, and I'll give you a couple of tips now as we go. Unboxing along. of the Powermatic PWBS 14. These are the tools that you will need to assemble the machine. There are four hardware packs, each one relating to a different part of the machine. Hardware pack two is for the extension table. Hardware pack three is the supports for the miter gauge and the rip fence. Hardware pack 4 is all about the rip fence as well. The base unit has got a couple of boxes for kicking around inside it and the motor. The motor's fixed, but watch out for the other boxes. The next box has got the saw. It's got the tables, it's got the saw body itself, the wheels, and also it's got another layer underneath that's got the um, rip fence. Now I assembled mine on my own and I just used my nouse a little bit. I set the saw on top of a wheelbarrow, put it up on some stools, tore the polystyrene off the end of the box and tipped it up onto the base mount and bolted it down. It wasn't very hard. If you're not comfortable with it, get someone to give you a hand. This first picture is looking down into the body of the uh, support box and you can see there's the air pump and also the drive pulley on the motor and the one on the right is just looking in from the side. It's important to bolt this capture, the lead capture, in so that you don't tear the cables out of the motor if you're moving it around. Multi-V belt is super quiet. It's just so nice. Now this is the belt cover that goes onto the back of the saw and they supply these small screws. It's not what is really shown in the old description, but that's what we use. This is the trunnion support and it's got a couple of pins under there that it locks onto and you tighten these bolts down hard right at the beginning. Don't leave these loose, just knock them in tight at the beginning. The next bolt is your height adjust on your main table. Now it's got a lock nut on it, you put it in, lower it down a fair way, leave it loose, we'll adjust it later. These are the spaces that hold the extension table up off the cast iron body. And these are the little grub screws that hold it up in the right position. Same kind of thing again, all in position and the machine bolts 
that go down through the, through the plate, the mounting plate, and down through the spacers into the cast iron base below it. Lock these down tight. These four machine bolts are designed to go up through that mount plate into the underside of the extension table. I always like to try and put all the threads in first to make sure I've got clear passage. Don't tighten them up. Very important, don't tighten them up. Open the door up on the cabinet because it makes it so much easier to get to. Next thing we've got to do is put the table on so we have to take the table leveler off and also the insert. There's all this gunk to protect it from um, rust as well while it's being transported. Now you can see I've dropped it in. The, the trunnion is sitting on the trunnion supports. Those bolts are coming through and now I've put the knobs on, the hand knobs, to hold the trunnion in place. Pulled it up square to make sure that it's going to be absolutely beautiful. Now I can adjust that table support bolt up and lock it off with a lock nut. They supply a couple of spaces to put in between the table and the extension table to give you the right gap. Now we have to raise the extension table up to the same height. And I just used a metal rule as a straight edge. I've still got a bit more to do there. Once it's up at the right height, we can lock off the grub screws. Next we've got the turpentine to clean off all the rubbish uh, with an old rag and I use a glove to keep my hands safe and clean. There it is nice and clean and as it's underneath if you have a look, if that blade guard is staying in that position you can only tip the table to 25 degrees. You have to loosen these two bolts off here to be, a, uh, there's another picture of them, and drop that blade guard down a bit lower to be able to tip to 45 degrees. Last box is the riser block and that's all that's in there. <laughs> I had a bit of a giggle when I opened this one up, but anyway, that's what, how it was. Now, there's the old guard. We need to take that black guard off and undo the power leads off the, uh, the um, cast iron arm. You can see this is where I've used the ratchet strap around a rafter to support the cast iron arm. Make sure whatever you're going to hook onto is going to take the weight. Take the weight and take the load and then you can undo the bolt. And it's a 24 millimeter nut and a 27 millimeter top on the bolt. So those two bolts. You'll raise it up and then you can put the block in and there's a little arrow pointing up. Make sure that's facing to the back of the saw. Put the new blade guard in. It's the yellow one. It's not the black one anymore. It's on the left. And we're going to put the new bearing guide in which is longer than the original one. There you can see it's a fair length. Be aware when you take this out that there's a ball bearing in uh, with spring-loaded ball bearing with a little grub screw and it's going to go flying if you're not careful. So I've got the spring back and it's in the bottom hole. And now the grub screw is going in over the top of the spring against the ball bearing to hold it steady. You, now when you put everything back in, you must make sure that the bearing guides are in line parallel to the mitre slot. Very important. Now we've got it to that stage, I'm going to tension it up to being used. So just tighten up the grub screws on the quick release bar. And then we have to loosen this bolt at the back here. It must be done before we start adjusting. Now to adjust, you put the Allen key in and rotate. The bearings will follow in an arc. That's why it's important to get it then perfectly in line to start. Now below, you've got this bearing guard cover. Take it off before you can start adjusting. It's pretty self-evident. The thrust brace as well, make sure it's not touching. This is just showing on the blade guard the blower's support arm. So pop that in and then put the brass nozzle on the hose and away you go. This is pretty self-explanatory. Don't push the blade guard up all the way. You can see on the left it's pushed up too far. It's going to rub in the wheel. The one on the right hand side is correct. Make sure that you adjust the top wheel so that the blade is tracking perfectly in the middle and make sure that your bearings are back far enough so that they're in line with the back of the gullets. It is a full 12 inch that it will rip when the riser blocks in. Now the machine's turned off at the moment. I'm just doing a final check that the blade is square. And now I've got the guards open and I've turned the machine on, so I have to be extremely careful. I'm just watching how the tracking is running. 
and that's looking good up there. I'm going to go around the back and I'm going to show you you raise the blade to a certain height. Now there's a red indicator showing three eighths and that's the size of the blade that's in there. Everything's going well down there. It's tracking central on the tire down the bottom as well. Next we're going to put the fence and the rails on. When you're using a washer please have the rounded side facing out towards you. It's just so much nicer on your hands. Okay, I'm using a combination square to check the height is parallel across the back on the rear support and on the front support I'm loosening the bolts off until I get two millimeters underneath the fence. I want that to be the same right across so I also adjust the back support to, be, to make sure that the fence is two millimeters above the table as well. That allows a little bit of dust to go under, it doesn't scratch. Now you can see under here we've got some slotted holes so we've got some adjustment. Now I'm lining the rip fence up with a miter gauge and I've set it, then I've come back after I've set it parallel to the miter gauge and I'm having a look for adjusting the fence left and right. Now I'm two millimeters out there so what I've done is I've used an indelible marker underneath to show where I'm at and then I've loosened the bolts off and slid it along a couple of mil and I'm going to do a check on the top now and that's looking pretty good and also there is a final adjustment by undoing that screw you can just adjust that dial as well if you want to. The rip guide is on the fence now and this allows you to compensate if your blade's not tracking correctly so you can follow a line. Just follow the instructions I've written here and it'll be fine. There's a cradle on the right hand side for the miter gauge and on the left hand side there's a cradle for the rip fence. All looking pretty good there. Now you can't use this kind of a blast gate straight onto the machine. There's no room so you have to use a rubber boot or another style and I put the blast gate further along in line and it works fine. But it is a tight fit there. And there's the saw all ready to go and back to where I'm at now. Thanks again for watching. If you like what I've been doing here and you think that I'm worth a like, click the old thumbs up button. It does help the ratings big time. <laughs> Thanks for that. There you go. All the other things, links in the description box. Feel free to throw comments in below. Uh, more the merrier. And keep on watching. Let your friends know if you're enjoying it. Thanks again. See ya.